We're bringing you all you need to succeed in the real estate business. It's Spilling the LT, brought to you by Lawyer's Title, telling you what it's really like to work in real estate. Welcome to another episode of Spilling the LT with Lawyer's Title. I am Brandi Dosser, your host, and if you know me personally, you know this episode is my jam. I'm super excited. Um, we're going to let George introduce our guest. George is one of our sales executives. George, introduce yourself and introduce our guest today. Uh, I'm George Van Wagening, and I'm a DFW sales executive for Lawyer's Title, uh, and I've brought with me today uh, Jarrah Hutchins. Uh, I'm going to let her tell, uh, tell you all what, uh, what she does, what she's all about. Um, I'll let you go ahead. Go for it. Yeah. All right. Um, so I'm, I'm Jarrah Hutchins. I am a firearms instructor. I work in the security sector. Um, been dealing with uh, things like human trafficking. Um, we do link analysis for the FBI Violent Crime Task Force. We help the U.S. Attorney's Office. Um, so I'm kind of just have, have dove into general defense, um, general weapons knowledge, and uh, I've, I've built gun ranges all over Texas for different investor groups. Um, I've trained large classes, small classes, one-on-one -on -one people, and then I kind of figured out that really <clears throat> the big need is for us to do a deep dive into women, uh, moms, um, young girls going off to college uh, without the, the wing of protection from their parents. Uh, and we need, to, we need to start addressing that. It needs to be common. Um, talking about violence in the workplace, like we need to quit pretending this stuff doesn't exist and just go, no, we can't, we can't talk about weapons in the workplace or we can't talk about defense in the workplace. Like that's just something that we don't need to have a conversation about because it happens too often for us to ignore it any longer. Right. Human trafficking is a big deal everywhere. Right. Um, Texas is a huge hub for that because we have a big international airport. We're very close to the water um, down in South Texas. So um, I've just kind of been diving into all that, educating myself on all of it and then doing uh, stuff like this to kind of help bring awareness. Yeah, so we're just super excited. We were talking before the episode about just kind of protecting our children and how important that is. And George, you got a bunch of kiddos and a I wife do. that's running Whole around family. with their hands full all the time. How many, though? <laughs> uh, three with one on the way. Yeah, so. okay. About to be a father of four. And so yeah. this is super important knowledge for you and, and your wife. And, and it's kind of applicable to everybody. So we're, we're really excited to talk today. You know, Texas has had some big changes. I think we're going to talk about that first. Tell us a little bit about your opinion on the new laws and kind of how that affects our day to day. Yeah, I got I got a little flack uh, for being an instructor that supports constitutional carry. Um, so I think that there are a lot of instructors in Texas that forgot why they got into this game, and that reason has always been freedom. So there never really should have been a license or a tax that we would have to pay in order to be able to carry a firearm on our body. Now with this kind of responsibility, it's weighty, you know, and we have to acknowledge that and we have to have respect for that. So do you need to take it upon yourself to train? Yes. Um, but I also think that there's a lot of instructors and a lot of venues in Texas that don't necessarily make it easy for you to do that, right? So they don't put you on a proper pathway to training and then you're left wondering where, sh where should I start? Right. When am I considered an experienced shooter? Um, what's a maintenance program and how do I get on that? So um, revamping my website, clearingthechamber.com right now to kind of show you what that looks like. And then you can take that sort of template and you can go anywhere. I mean, I'm local to the DFW area, but there's people in Amarillo and Lubbock and Corpus and Houston that are like, I just need a, a syllabus, right? For right. lack of a better word. So the constitutional carry port part of it uh, really in, in to make it short and simple, took an infringing tax off of people in poverty-stricken communities. Okay. And those are people that probably need to be able to defend themselves more than anyone. Right. You got a lot of single moms in poverty-stricken communities. And so outside of their homes or apartments, they really didn't have a good way to protect their children because they weren't able to carry a firearm on their body. Right. They could do it in the car, but they can right. do it on their body without having to go through this pretty expensive license procedure. So talk to sure. us about those requirements. What changed under the law? Just so our, <clears throat> our so constitutional viewers. carry just took that away. It's very, very simple. So, you know, as of September 1st, which was seven days ago or six days ago, we no longer in the state of Texas have to have a license to carry 
in order to holster a firearm and conceal it on our body or open carry it on our body. Now, I believe the open carry requirement is still, it has to be on a belt or shoulder holster, um, but the concealed carry requirements are n nothing. I mean, you just right. hide it under a jacket or a shirt or whatever. So before so we, we used that, that to take a class, mm -hmm. that co was, was a cost prohibitive to mm -hmm. some people, and then also have to qualify um, with the shooting course. Second. Yes, and you no longer have to do that. Now, here that's where the controversy came in because a lot of people were like, this is going to make our communities super unsafe because nobody's going to train. Hear me now. 21 other states did this before us. And, 21 other states okay. before Texas. Can you yeah. believe that? Yeah. And they have the data, and the data says that they actually saw a 20% increase in their licenses. So Texas is still going to offer the license to carry, and if you can afford it, it's a $40 state fee. It's probably 75 bucks to go take the class. So it's not even really that expensive anymore, especially in the middle of class. Fingerprints and things like that. You need to get that training. And then I have a nonprofit where we're raising money to go into poverty-stricken communities and teach them these laws for free. Like, they need to have this education, right? Very the cool. people that can afford it, you pay the 75 bucks to take the class, you pay the $40 to go and get your license, you're going to have a $25 range fee to go and shoot, you know, get your license because you're going to travel with your gun. You should. If you're going out of state, especially, I mean, the only places that this doesn't really work is the West Coast, right? California, Oregon, Nevada, right? That area there. Right. And they're all coming here anyway. And they're all coming right. here anyway. <laughs> yeah. And then the kind of the upper half of the East Coast and then Illinois. You can carry, we have reciprocal agreements with literally every other state. So go ahead and get that license if you can afford it. Get that education. It's going to make it easier for you to buy guns. You're not going to have to go sit through a background check. You're going to be able to travel with your firearm. When you get pulled over by the cops, they're going to automatically know you're not a felon. That's a yeah. huge That'd be nice. advantage. Yeah right? You hand them that license to carry and they're like, oh, you're just a lead foot on the Chisholm Trail. It's fine. Okay. You're not a felon. So they don't have to get, it doesn't get tense. Right. So all constitutional carry did was just take away a license requirement, a, a dumb tax that you really were never supposed to be able to pay anyway. Okay. To be able to have an inalienable right. And that's it. So in, in the state of Texas, no license needed. Still get training. Cool. Very cool. And let's talk about, you know, we were talking before the episode about women in particular and why women should be really um, taking advantage of training and, and this new rule and why they should always be caring. And can you share with everyone kind of the statistics you were telling George and I? Yeah, this is a conversation that needs to be had at every dinner table. Okay, husbands need to be talking to their wives about this. Friends need to be talking to their single mom friends about this. Uh, we need to be putting this out on social media because the brunt of physical protection of children does fall mostly on women, on moms, because nobody wants to fight George, okay? Nobody wants, like, statistically, ki kids aren't being snatched up from their daddies and sold into human trafficking rings, okay? Now, to be fair, the bulk of human trafficking actually happens in poverty-stricken communities, Okay, so there's not a lot of people going to South Lake, Texas or Highland Park, Texas or even Dallas proper and going, we're going to snatch up your kids. It's not happening a ton, but it is out there and you do need to be aware of it. It actually happened in Fort Worth a couple of years ago. And that that young girl uh, in the Fairmount area was literally at 630 in the afternoon when it was still light outside, snatched up from her mom's arms in broad daylight. Okay, so it does happen. You need to be aware of that, but statistically, it's mostly happening in poverty-stricken communities. However, the physical protection of the children does mostly fall on women because people are looking at us as a soft target. They're right. seeing the mom with four kids, your wife, mm -hmm. hello, <laughs> okay, and they're going, Trying to bring she's them all together. Right. She's got the stroller. She's got <laughs> yeah. the shopping bag. Keep them from running out in the street. Yeah. yeah. We got to organize that, right? And we'll talk about time management in a little bit. But getting that physical knowledge, training with the weapon of your choice. So hear me. It's not always about the gun. If you're not comfortable with guns, that's okay. This isn't a shaming episode where we tell people that they suck because they <laughs> don't want to train with guns. That's not what this is. 
Pick your weapon of choice. And if your weapon of choice is situational awareness, fine. Because that is actually your greatest tool. Right. But I get, I get in trouble in a lot of moms groups on Facebook because they'll post silly things like, what's your most unpopular opinion? And people will go, I like pineapple on pizza or I'm team Jacob. <laughs> okay. And then I come in and I'm like, hey, if you don't get any situational awareness training or any self-defense training and you're a mom, you're kind of lazy. <clears throat> so we have this very unrealistic expectation that police officers are supposed to jump in front of bullets for us, show up immediately when you sing the song, right? Like, you know, like a good neighbor. Cops are here. The cops are here, right? <laughs> and we have this unrealistic expectation when, in fact, truthfully, no police officer is duty-bound to sacrifice their life for your own. They didn't give birth to you. You gave birth to this child. It's your job. Yeah, and I so mean, you got to yeah. do something. And if you're like, weapons aren't my thing, I'm a pacifist, no shame. But you still need to be aware of other people who are not like you, who could potentially harm you. And you got to be able to trust your intuition and see that coming. And a lot of women don't trust their intuition for fear of being rude. So if you're watching, you need to read The Gift of Fear by Gavin De Becker, especially if you're a woman. You need to understand that psychology and what to look for. And when people are doing these psychological terms like intentional teaming, right, which is a psychological term of somebody kind of bullying you into like they're forcing a kindness upon you, right? But there's always an agenda there and they're trying to get information out of you. And so women really need to get on this train and quit being, quit getting pissed off at your husband's for wanting you to do this, right? Because in your head, it's like, oh, it's just something else for me to do. And I don't have time. I got these four kids and, you know, like yeah. I can't, right? Do you, the men need to start stepping in mm. and going, I got these, I got these kids for eight hours. Okay. Go do your thing. Okay. Maybe 10 because you're going to want to have some wine after all that. Mm. Okay. You're going to be drinking through the fire hose. You're going to be getting all this knowledge. And some of the things that they're going to learn are going to scare you. Yeah. And you need to have some deep briefing conversations. Like your spouse should be your last appointment of the day. Right. And you need to be like doing that debrief when you get into bed and go, honey, I learned all this stuff today, but this scares me. And like, I need your support. Like you need to start having those conversations. Men need to start helping their wives make time to do this. And then wives need to stop shaming their husbands and getting pissed off at their husbands for wanting them to get this education. Cause sometimes they just don't know how to express how hard it would be to lose you. Right. And they want you to be set up for success when they're not around. And I think sometimes we also put way too much responsibility on our husbands for protection when in fact, statistically, unfortunately, it's more our job. Right. And you were saying how many licensed, how many people carry daily? What was the percentage? So when license to carry was still a thing before constitutional carry was passed, less than 5% of the Texas population even had a license to carry. Okay. So the whole program itself was actually a moot point. Right. It wasn't working, mm -hmm. right? Now, if we, we probably would have kept it if 50% or 45 or even 30% mm -hmm. percent of the Texas population had it. It would have been a program that was working, but it wasn't. So of the 5% or 4% of the Texas population that had a license to carry, only 2.4% of those people claimed to carry every day. So you only had a half of the fraction right. that was even exercising this on a daily basis. So the, most of the people were like, oh, my stuff is at home. I got it in the end table or in the safe or whatever, or it's in the console of my car. In the mall, that doesn't help you. In the restaurant, that doesn't help you. So out of the 2.4%, what are those even women, right? Yeah, I mean, we don't a, even know. So it has fraction. to be... It has to be a fraction of the fraction, yeah. right? And I'm telling you, ladies, I'm telling you, moms, like these people are banking on uh -huh. the fact that you are unaware, unprepared, yeah. and unarmed. They are yeah. banking on it. Well, statistically speaking, it's a good you bet. You are. It's a good bet. Yeah. Statistically Praying speaking, the they're winning. They could right. go to Vegas and win every right. time, yeah. right? Right. And so we really got to get women on this train. We got to get employers on this train and go. I mean, I did a, I did a six weeks um, training for a, a major Fortune 100 company in Dallas. They had 150 people just at this one campus, and they've got 30 locations all over the United States. And they were really smart in going, come in and teach my people situational awareness. 
non-lethal weapons and run, hide, fight, which is active shooter response, right. okay? Right. Teach it. And this company, and I'm not gonna say who it is, but they figured out legally, right? They, they did the deep dive and did the research. They were like, we are actually better off legally and from a liability perspective if we were to let every person that had a license to carry carry their gun here at work than if we hired a 10-man security team. We would actually hmm. have less liability legally. Interesting. And that's what they did. That's awesome, though. That's now, awesome. they can put extra requirements on it. They can say, if you're going to carry a gun here, you have to have a license to carry, and you have to have a valid shooting qualification from a, a, a firearms instructor every quarter. They can do that. Right. And that's fine, right? But that's what they did, and that really solved a lot of problems with the bulk of their people feeling unsafe because they their their headquarters are in an area that's like it's like by all the Mitch, yeah strip clubs and all that stuff that's happening right in right. dallas off walnut hill right? right and so it was a problem they went in they figured out how to solve it they brought me in to do the six weeks of training but we can't ignore it we have to we have to say don't be an easy problem. target why why be an easy target so shifting gears a little bit because i mean we have tons of women clients but we also have a lot of men realtors Talk about it kind of from a real estate perspective. People are out showing their houses. Like, what are things that, like, I guess, pointers you could give agents on on being safe in those situations or meeting with people they've never met before? It blows my mind how that how this isn't already like a common sense, logical solution. Is you're you are in literally one of the most dangerous genres of industry, and you don't even know it, right? And You've read the articles of people getting murdered, showing houses. You've heard the stories of people who were sexually assaulted or attacked or in uncomfortable situations with people that they didn't know. So you already know that it's a problem. You are relying on this maybe cognitive dissonance of, you know, or it's not going to happen to me. I show houses in a really nice, rich area. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter. You still have, I think you still have like a one in 60 chance of being the victim of a violent crime in Highland Park. I believe is what the statistics show. We can verify that, but I promise you it's, it's still a problem, it's still an issue. So how do we solve it? Well, we need more companies bringing people in, instructors in to do this situational awareness training, doing doorways and corners. Um, you know, so, so realtors who choose to uh, carry a weapon need to do a doorways and corners class, a clearing the room class, right? Understanding where your exits are. That's why it's really important. And I know it's difficult. Don't get me wrong. Like people say, oh my God, it's so hard, but my day is so hectic. Like I get it and quit giving me the excuse, right? Time management is time management for a reason and you need to take control of it and you need to take responsibility for it and manage your time and give yourself buffers between appointments and showings so that you have an opportunity to go into a property that you don't know or at least pull up, pull it up on realtor.com or something that has pictures of it so that you understand where your entries and exits are and how you can get out. Quit turning your back to potential clients that you don't know, mm -hmm. right? If you're showing a house to your best friend in high school who knows you're a realtor, you probably know that person. You probably maintained a friendship with that person. You can probably be a little more lax with that person, but you're, mm -hmm. you're a chick yeah. Going to show a house to a dude who's not coming with his family. Yeah. Your senses need, you need to automatically assume the worst yeah. and prepare for the worst. And then if the worst doesn't happen, that's fine. But right. if you're, if you're a fe especially a female realtor and you're not carrying some kind of weapon and you're, and you're turning your back, you need to let your client go into the room first. You come in second. Be, hey, right, closer come, to the exit. <laughs> come see the beautiful master bedroom with the open big tub and shower and all this stuff, and then let them go in first and you follow them. Right. Right? Very simple solutions to what people are making a very complicated problem. But the fact that carrying a weapon isn't normal in real estate for realtors blows my mind. Pretty crazy, right? And, and the only weapon they're really carrying, the only thing they're really carrying is their cell phones. And I feel like people are so distracted right now with technology and they're they're doing this and looking for comps yeah. and talking about the property that they're not even watching what's going on around them when they are showing. Maybe a set of car keys or something, but I mean, yeah. I guess no one has keys anymore. They're all fobs. They're all fobs. So. Mine's a fob too, right? Um, let's talk about, well, first, obviously guns being an option. Um, you know, I have 
female realtors ask me all the time, what should I carry? And I always tell them, go try them out. But maybe you have some advice for, for those women that are looking to possibly purchase <laughs> their first handgun. First and foremost, we need to take away this stigma that carrying a gun is bad. Right. Right. I mean, we, what we need to be doing is our, you know, our elected officials, um, the people that sit in our House legislature and our Senate and our governor need to be encouraging people to go and get self-defense training. We need to encourage people to do it. We need to stop going guns are bad, number one. Number two, what should I carry? It's different for everyone. This is the most common question that I get. Um, there is no one size fits all answer. It's how are you built? How big are your hands? What can you handle? What limitations do you have? Carpal tunnel, arthritis, things like that. Um, you know, email me, call, you know, clearingthechamber at gmail.com. Tell me what your limitations are. Let's meet up. Tell me your height. Your hand, your hand size, I mean, I could probably tell in a picture, probably a lot of it, and I can tell you the guns you won't want to have. And then you can go to places like Texas Gun Experience. You can go to places like Defender Outdoors in Fort Worth where they have a rental inventory. Mm -hmm. And you set aside this budget and don't have Starbucks for two weeks if you're on a tight budget and say, okay, now I want to rent three, these three guns that Jarrah told me that, I, that she thinks I would like. And I'm going to shoot them and I'm going to make the decision for me, right? So we have to end this whole thing where dads and husbands say, here's a 38 special. Now you don't have to worry about racking a slide. No, we need to be teaching people how to do things. We want high capacity. We want concealability. We want ease of rack. There's all kinds of stuff out there, right? That, I mean, M&P, you know, Smith & Wesson came out with the M&P Easy Shield. Yeah. Right? You can literally rock that thing with two fingers. My grandma has that. Okay. Yeah. It's, now there's pros and cons to that. Right. But it's, they solved the racking of the yeah, side Yeah, I problem. mean, she has arthritis, so that was like the perfect choice for her. Exactly. And so now we have to, so we, but we have to open ourselves up and make time, right, to be educated for that. And, um... That's where you start is, you know, pick the gun I want. So don't just go buy something without necessarily yes. shooting it. Um, Absolutely. And, you, and then you have to go. And so I have a whole academy and I have these workshops that I wrote, right? Because the second question that I get is, uh, well, I wear, I, I dress like this and I have issues right. concealing in this. And so I have the preparing what you wear workshop where you come and you get an idea of all kinds of holsters you don't have to just go get stuff that's specific for women. There's a lot of stuff that's been out on the market for a long time that women can use. It's just like if it's not pink or purple, they're like, I don't want to. You know. So now manufacturers are starting to go, hey, if we bling this out a little bit, people will pay attention to it. And now women will use it. And it's the exact same thing as it was before. It's just a different <laughs> color. <laughs> you know, and that's fine. There's nothing that says that you can't have cute accessories for your gun or that your gun can't be purple and blingy or Tiffany blue, right? It still shoots the same. It's still <laughs> yeah. going to kill somebody if you pull the trigger. It's totally yeah. fine, okay? Yeah. You can make this part of your lifestyle however you want, okay? But you have to get educated by somebody that you trust and you have to vet your instructor. And so that's the third question that I get is, yeah. how do I find an instructor that's going to work for me? I am not the only one. I'm not the end-all, be-all when it comes to guns. I do not have to be the only person that you go to. Um, Mindy K. Ray is another great instructor in the DFW area. Uh, Edwina Parker is another really good instructor, female, in the DFW area. There's a lot of really great male instructors. But here's the thing that I would tell you is if they can't put you on a pathway, and if that pathway includes six weeks of introductory training, get rid of it because they're just trying to take your money. You need max three intro lessons, okay? And that's if you're really freaking nervous about the situation. Right. That's if you got a lot of anxiety, okay? But, and if they're, and then if they don't know the neuroscience behind what your body does under stress, stimulus, and fear. So if you get an instructor that says, and you say, hey, can you talk to me about the neuroscience? Like, what are the seven bodies' natural reactions to stress? If they can't answer that, yeah. they don't, they're literally, all they're doing is regurgitating someone else's instructional thought and making it their own and pretending like they're a teacher. You want a teacher, not an instructor. I love that. And I love that Jared is available because I know so many women that are, they get very intimidated when they go to ranges or they're in it because they're male dominated. I mean, when you go into these things, there's not a ton of women in there shooting. And well, I if I could like, add to that, I mean, people, absolutely. I know, I mean, so many realtors, there's a ton of interest out there as far as owning firearms and knowing how to use them. But the, 
the intimid even the intimidation of the firearm that they already own. Right. I don't think that half of them probably don't even know how to clean the thing. Correct. You know? Yeah. That's I, an education you can get on YouTube. <laughs> My husband's totally. the king of that. But, he watches everything on YouTube. That's how he knows how to clean everything. But, I mean, the, I know lots of people who own firearms, and they just don't use them, so they're intimidated right. by them. They need right. training. Well, I think and that's what a maintenance program does is, you know, when you take an introduction to handgun class from me, I give you homework. Mm -hmm. You're going to spend time with your gun at home. You've got to get comfortable with it. Um, it's got to be a family discussion because that, that's like the fourth question I get is, well, I got, ki I've got, I have kids, so like they should be comfortable uh, with it too. Every person yeah. in America has kids. <laughs> yeah. Like that can't be an excuse for you to lay down on your safety. You just got to bring them into the mix. Yeah. You got to yeah. bring them into the mix, and so it's just like so. So understand if you're coming to train with me, I'm a very no excuses person. Yeah, it shouldn't be a if secret, you say I don't have time know. or I have kids or there's like I'm gonna go. So <laughs> yeah, let's figure out how to manage that, right? But you have to spend time with your gun every day. So um, I'm starting this thing next week. It's called the Pew Pew Zoom, right? So we're going to get up, um, you know, the maximum number of people that can be on a Zoom call. I'm just going to give up uh, whatever credential that is. You're going to take your gun, and we're going to do draw from holster exercises. Dry fire at home, no bullets. Because <clears throat> when, you, when you spend time with your gun every day, 10 or 15 minutes every day, that's my whole routine. I wake up. I drink water. I have coffee. I mess with my gun. Always have coffee before you mess with your gun, okay? <laughs> um, if you're not a coffee drinker, you probably want to take up the habit at this point. But you you drink coffee, and then you mess with your gun. And so it's it's me throwing on a holster, like just put on pants, any pants, right? Put on your holster and get into that draw from holster scenario, 30 to 50 reps. This is muscle memory for you. <clears throat> now you've worked with your gun. When you do this, you're you're creating such an awareness of the fundamentals that it becomes natural to you to go, I can get into my grip on my gun without even looking at my gun. I can, I can literally bring it from here to here and not even look at it, which is what you're going to want to do anyway, especially when you get into dynamic critical reloads. And now <clears throat> I'm, I'm pressing out. I'm naturally getting into my athletic stance. So if this ever happens to me, it's just going to come naturally. I'm just going to literally fall back on this training. It's going to be like nothing. And then if you have such a grasp of the fundamentals, when you go to the range, you're not spending the better part of your 60 minutes trying to remember the fundamentals or having yeah. to wave down a range officer and go, I forgot this. How do I do it? You're literally concentrating on recoil management and marksmanship. And that's, that brings down the amount of money that you have to spend on training. Because when you go to the gun range twice a month, you're literally concentrating on marksmanship and recoil management. That's it. You're not wasting any time. And you're more comfortable, them. right? Because yeah. you're just, you know, used to used to handling Absolutely. the firearm versus pulling it out for the first time in front of a bunch of strangers you don't know and figuring out which way the bullets go into the yeah, and magazine. You, but you also you've <laughs> conquered a fear. Right. You've yeah. conquered something that you were scared of. And now that's that now this kind of this kind of falls into our business, right? Now, if I've conquered a firearm and I'm comfortable carrying a gun on my body every day. And I have a confidence that I can physically protect my children. You can't stop me in business. Yeah. You can't tell me that I can't smash that sales goal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that's the difference, right? Have I mean, her for a sales training. Attitude, right? <laughs> <laughs> but wait, where are you, what are you talking about? I've got this, right? I'm about to be super rich, right? And then I'm going to buy more guns. Love it. Lots of bullets, too. <laughs> I mean, like, now I can afford to, to do this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you have to smash that fear of being able to protect yourself and how do I get it done, right? And then, and then it just trickles down into everything else in your life. I love it. You know? So tell us your contact information one more time because I know that after watching this, people are going to be blowing you up like they're already calling myself. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, so my website is clearingthechamber.com. Uh, my email address is clearingthechamber at gmail.com. You can find me on Instagram at Clearing the Chamber. You can find me on Facebook at Clearing the Chamber. I don't do Snapchat. I'm 40. Yeah, um, no. I don't do, I don't, I'm on TikTok at Clearing the Chamber. You're not going to find a lot of content on there yet, but, <laughs> um, you know, those main platforms. Okay, um, and so you do there. business trainings, in-home trainings, I do, yeah, trainings. individuals, corporate. Um, you know, we could, we could find a venue and get 200 realtors together and do situational awareness and only the weapons. Okay. That's not a one, -on, that's not a class you need to do one-on-one. -on -one. It's a lecture class and it's an example class 
and then you go and you take the next steps. And then as you go through this actual physical training, the, the classes get smaller and smaller because you do have to concentrate on people one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And George, you can set that up. You yeah, that. absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> yeah. It was so informational. Um, George, thanks for inviting her. Do you have any final thoughts you want to throw in? Um, when I was given this opportunity, I, uh, the first person I thought of was Jera. You know, I, I have a, a passion for this sort of thing. And I think, you know, when I talk with realtors on the day-to-day -day basis, there's a, there's a huge need for it. It's, it's such a big part of their lives. You know, we're all chasing the dollar and for them, they're, you know, they're dealing with people that, you know, other than a referral, people that they've never met in their life. And the amount of fraudsters and stories that I hear from them on that subject, I'm just like, how is this not something that's more important to you? Yeah, absolutely. So, and it um, has to be something that you make time for. And I love working around people's schedules. You know, tell me, like, is this a, is this a nine o'clock at night class that we have to do nine to 11? You get home at 1130, you wake up at 630, you're still getting sleep. Quit giving me that excuse. Yeah. Stop it. We can still get this done. 6 a.m.? You want me to come to teach you at 6 a.m.? I will wake up. Yeah. I will do this for you, right? Like your kid's still asleep, husband takes care of breakfast, you get an hour-long uh, gun lesson in, I will make that happen for you. I'll come to your house and do it. See, what can be more important I mean, than personal safety at this why point, not, right? Yeah, why not? Yeah. So, yeah, and then I feel like George is going to have some conversations with his wife this evening. <laughs> yes, yes. I think some... I just a keep buying guns. Gonna the formulated. guns keep getting smaller and smaller. I'm like, does this work for you? No, I'll go get another one. Well, stop buying them for her. <laughs> yeah. Let her shoot them and buy like, right. her own out. Anyway. Well, if you guys like this episode, please make sure to follow, like, subscribe. You can also find us on social media at LTDFW. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time.